So, uh, so we have a mutual friend called Bruce, and Bruce was helping Susan and Billy build their house, and he he kept sending me these pictures of this. With these the WhatsApp videos and pictures of this amazing otter and Billy hanging out with it, and、um, and so I got in my car and I drove to Shetland and 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 met Billy and Susan and Molly, and that's kind of how the story was born. We weren't looking to do a story at the time; it was just kind of fell into our lap like that.、Um, yeah, so Charlie rocked up. Liked what he saw, and it was a few days later he phoned. He phoned one night, and it was unusual for Charlie to phone. I thought, okay. And、um, anyway, then he said, "Billy, how do you feel making a film about the otter?" And I said, "No chance. I do not want to be on the wrong end of a camera lens." Anyway, we had a think about it, and me and Susan chatted about it. And while we were still on the phone to Charlie, and we thought, you know what? Why? Why not? What an opportunity! And it's never going to happen again. And why not share the? The joy of the story that we have with with other people. So that was, yeah, that's how it started for us. Susan, I don't know if you've got any thoughts I, on it. I think initially I, I thought it's not going to be the most interesting film in the world. Man feeds otter, otter swims away, otter swims back, gets a fish, <laughs> swims away again. But、um, so so yeah, we were we were really up for yeah. That's fine because it's going to all be recorded because we were taking our own footage, but nothing. There's nothing spectacular in it. And what do you do with hundreds and hundreds of videos and photos on your phone? You know, so the thought of capturing all of that was was lovely, actually, and and we wanted to do that. I guess it's when it trans moved into that more story about us that it became a bit more. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I suppose for me that possibly the most beautiful aspect was actually learning. About Molly from a different angle, seeing her in a different light. Because at the end of the day, my mission was to feed her, keep her alive. That, that, that's all I was ever going to do. Making a film,、um, not by design as such, but it resulted in us finding out other things about her, finding about her habits, where she lives, where she goes, what she plays with, otherwise. And so that, that, that was a really interesting side to it. I think the most challenging side to it was, and. and It wasn't a bad challenge, but I, I think the earliest we ever started filming, filming was about ten to six in the morning, because she turned up. Therefore, we went to work, and I think Charlie the latest was probably about half past ten or eleven o'clock at night. Molly rocked up. It was snowing. We went out and, and did. So I say challenging. It wasn't a, a bad challenge, but it just meant we were on scene all the time, just in case. But it was good fun. Yeah, I think. I keep. I think keeping it moving was, you know, it's an hour and a half film about a man feeding a wet cat. I think keeping the pace、uh, going. But you know, once we got there and started working with Billy and Susan, we realised just how much was going on. And actually, what you know, when you watch the, the film, I don't think it isn't slow. It is constantly changing and constantly moving. And I think, that, you know, part of that is the sort of emotional journey. I think that particularly that Billy's on, but also.、Um, I think the other the the other sort of challenge within that was making a film really within a you know kilometer two kilometers most of the, almost the whole film's shot in this tiny bubble and then making that look cinematic, making that look like a you know the, you could watch that in a in a movie theater was for me it was a challenge to sort of create visuals and and the, the other camera operators as, as well to create visuals that that had that sort of epic feel even though they're shot in this tiny little bubble. Yeah. So I think then, yeah. I mean, you're right. You can't rehearse and practice for a moment like, like a wild otter turning up starving. But、um, I spent the first 17 years of my life on a, a small farm, so I I understood animals, domestic animals. I understood wildlife that was around us. And you, you you get a feel for when an animal's healthy, when it's not healthy, and, and an animal has basic needs like food, water, warmth. Um, so I think when Molly turned up, it was obvious. You could, her bones were, st- were sticking out through her skin, and she、uh, skin was hanging loose. It was obvious that she was starving, but she didn't look unhealthy. She was just very, very hungry. So it, it was very easy to decide. Well, I'll give her food because that right now is her greatest need,、um, and that's 
that's that's what we did. So it, it was a fairly simple decision and a fairly e easy process to get get food and, and gave it to her. I built a shelter for her and sometimes she used it, but really she had her own shelter that she went to. Um, so from my point of view, it was about food. I did I did phone a, a local otter sanctuary and said, look, this is happening. Is this okay to feed her? And they said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Just, just don't domesticate her if you can. Um, and then, of course, when Charlie arrived on the scene and, and a couple of other local author experts, they were able to, to guide me and, and tell me the do's and don'ts and what to do to and what not to do. But really, it was about food. Yeah, I think when we set out, it, you know, I, I tend to make emotional films, um, wildlife, you know, emotional wildlife films. So I think it's always there with me. But I think when we started out, we just started covering what was happening as fast as we could. And I think the the sort of human emotional element was really born out of the friendship that you know the three of us and and also Johnny who was second camera I think was born out of that and 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 a huge amount of trust on Billy and Susan's part to put that in in my hands I think so I but I, you know I think you know Billy and I and Susan are very close and I think what I get to see is a slightly different side of their story than they see it and I think as a filmmaker I that's what was interesting to me. So I think, um, you know, if you if you had made the film without its layering of emotion, it wouldn't have been what it was. And it's, you know, it's not just a, matter, a film about a man feeding an otter. It's a, it's a film about many more uh, emotional subplots. So, yeah. I don't know. And I think, as Charlie says, because we all live together, you know, we we pretty much would eat dinner together. We would... You know have coffee in the morning together so we we all start to learn a lot about each other i think this thing just naturally developed you know we would be doing stuff during the day and they would be filming um and you know hard, not much of it was used but we were used to them being around so it it just became part of us to the point where when they left it was really sad you know, don't don't tell Charlie I've said this, but we actually do miss him. <laughs> I think as I think as well, if, if they arrived with a whole script and said, "Here's yeah. a story, yeah. memorize these lines," it would have been a whole different kettle of fish. But as Charlie well, kind of alluded to, it, the the film kind of evolved a little bit as as it went on, and it's not like we were following a script. We we were we were just talking about what was happening, and and and, it, and then it became a story, and then they saw where it was going. So. I think for me, and, and I didn't really acknowledge it at the time, it's only sort of looking back at it and then when the film came out, and we talk about this a lot, or Billy especially talks about it a lot, but if you, the more you give, the more you get back. And that is exactly what has happened here. You know, this little creature, she wasn't looking for anything except food. And Billy, she wouldn't have got that from me had, had, had she come up that day and I was there, she still would be without the fish. But because Billy has a different <laughs> different heart to me, <laughs> you know, that's what he was looking for. And, and what we have got, and not just because of the film, but just what Molly has brought to us. You know, when, when she arrives, if Billy's not around, I'll go out and feed her. And, you know, she's a nosy little thing. So I brought shopping in one day and put it on the ground and she was right in the bag to see what I bought. Now, you know, so these, these things, yeah, they, they do bring something to your life. And, and she's she's kind of heightened our awareness to that. And now we're on the second cycle of her, her year with us. You know, we're on the next year. We're seeing some of that behavior repeating itself. So we almost sort of think we know what's going to happen next. And it does. So we're much more aware, much, much more aware of, of the wildlife side of it outside, outside us. I was just going to say that I think the the last line summarizes it up in the film, which was, you know, as, as an observer of Billy and Susan, is that, you know, this this animal came into their lives and enriched their lives enormously. I would say, but she knew nothing about it. She was just being, and I, I kind of, I, I love that, you know, as an observer of them and their situation. I think that's a lovely sort of, and it's true, isn't it? It's like having a, do it's like having Jade the dog. You know, Jade is hugely enriching to. To their lives, but she didn't know. She didn't know she is. Yeah, <laughs> it just is. 
the spot on. I, I yeah, was yeah. Really, I mean, everybody and everything has a personality. Well, if it's an if it's an animal, and so your pet dog or cat has a personality, and you get to know know it intimately because you're with it all the time. And Molly was a bit like that. She has a personality. For me, that was that was a bizarre thing to realise and come and come come to understand. She's got her own little personality. And I think that, that made her very, very endearing because she is curious. She's cheeky. She's interested. She's playful. I've never seen any aggression in her. So for me, that, that, that was lovely to just tap into that and, and, yeah, just see what her personality was. Right, um, I'll, I'll dive in quickly. Um, you know, I, th I think we all set out early on to make a film that made people smile. I think in a world where everything's miserable, everything's depressing in the news, we're constantly bombarded with... You know negativity and i think we all saw something really beautiful and set out to make people smile and i i, I don't think it's deeper than that yeah and, and to be honest when i see the movie and, and charlie said from the start I, I just want to make a beautiful thing i want it to be lovely and, and and he's done just that so you can watch it and you can enjoy it you can immerse yourself in it and almost feel like you're one of the characters in it you, you can imagine yourself doing what we're doing and um, so if people take nothing away then that, that 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 that's a lovely thing, but yeah, I think as well if if they learn that they can connect with wildlife in a different way, you still have to be careful. But um, if they can still connect in a different way and and be a bit closer to wildlife, then that's that's a good thing. Yeah, totally.